Hello everyone and welcome. I am continuing on with my video series on Java programming for beginners. In this video we discuss integer division and the modulus operator and I will explain in detail how to use them and provide many examples. In my previous video on arithmetic operators I ended that video with an example of a division operation that resulted in an unexpected answer. I will now begin with that very example and explain exactly what is going on. So let us begin. In our example we wish to compute the expression x over 2y and I highlight the danger that if we did not use the parentheses then due to operator precedence we would actually get the wrong result. We would actually have x divided by 2 which would be computed first because division and multiplication have the same operator precedence therefore the Java virtual machine will execute this statement from left to right. So x will be divided by 2 and that result will be multiplied by y. This is not the same operation as x divided by 2y. Let's actually run that just to demonstrate it. So that gives us a result of 10 because 10 divided by 2 is 5 and 5 multiplied by 2 is 10. But that's not what we want. x is 10, 2y is 4, y is 2, 2 by 2 is 4, 10 divided by 4 is not 10. So to ensure we get the right answer, we must use parentheses to ensure that this multiplication is performed before this division operation. OK, so when we compile and run that, the answer should be, well, 10 divided by 4 is 2.2, or 2.5, should I say. It goes in two times with a remainder of 2. Now here it lies in the problem. Our result is 2. Is this wrong? Well, actually, no because we have declared result, our variable, to be of type integer, which means, recall, an integer data type can only hold whole integer values. It cannot hold fractional or decimal parts. So if we wish to, to obtain the remainder, if you like, the fractional component of this operation, we actually have to use the modulus, what's called the modulus operator. So let me explain that. Briefly, when two integers are divided, if the quotient is an integer, then the fractional part is truncated, that is discarded, and that's exactly what happened here. Therefore, to obtain the remainder, use the modulus operator with the same operands. So let's do that. I'm now going to declare an integer called remainder, a nice appropriate name, and we use the exact same operands. So the operands in this case being x, and 2 multiplied by y, but we use a different operator. We use the modulator operator, the modulus, should I say, operator. So we now have 2 multiplied by y. So what this says is, find out how many times this goes into x, ignore how many times it goes in, but give us the remainder. That's basically what it's saying. So let's actually print this out. Let's print out remainder and see what happens. OK, just to fit it all on one screen, I shall put it like that there. OK, so let's run that. Now it says the result is 2 and the remainder is 2. Is that correct? Well, x is 10 divided by 4. 4 goes in, sorry, 4 goes into 10 two times, which is correct, and is 2 over. OK, let's try a different number. Let's try x is equal to 13. So what should we get? Well, 13 divided by, f divided by 4. Well, 4 goes into 13 3 times and does 1 over. So result should be 3 and remainder should be 1, 1 over. Let's see what happens. Is result 3 and remainder 1? The result is 3 and the remainder 1. See? There we go. And just one more example, we'll try um, 16 and we'll try 3 this time, okay? Just to show this. So what should happen? Well, 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. Sorry, why is 3? I beg your pardon. 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. 6 into 16 goes twice and 4 over. So I'm expecting result to be 2 and remainder to be 4. Let's see what happens. The result is 2 and the remainder 4. OK. So the modulus operator gives us the remainder 
of an integer division operation. Okay, you might say that's great, Martin, but really what use is it? How practical is it? Well, let me demonstrate a very practical example. If you want to, for example, to find out or determine if a number is odd or even, how would you do it? Well, one very simple way is to use the modulus operator. So let me demonstrate that now. So if x modulus 2 is equal to 0, then let's just say we'll print out x. Sorry, let me type this properly. System.out.println x is even. We'll just print that out, if it is even. Else, we will print out x is odd. So I shall just cut and paste this to save me typing. x is odd. So let me declare an integer x. Let me set it for simplicity to 10 initially. So let's compile and run that and see what happens. I'll first compile it to make sure it compiles successfully. It has. Now run. It says x is even. I've set x to 10. Oops. So now let me set x to 13, an odd number, and compile and run this. And as you can see, it says x is odd. So that's a very simple application of the modulus operator. It effectively divides 2 into x. It ignores how many times it goes in, but simply determines is remainder equal to 1. Now obviously if x is even, 2 should go into it exactly. It should go in an exact number of times. Therefore there should be no remainder. The remainder should be 0. So if x is even, this will be printed out x is even. But if x is odd, there will always be a remainder of 1. Therefore this conditional expression will evaluate to false and will print out x is odd. So there is a simple example of the modulus operator being used in a very practical scenario. Concerning integer division, there is one more aspect or error trap I wish to highlight to you, and that is division by zero. So let me demonstrate. I will declare another variable called y, and I'll initialize the zero. Now you probably wouldn't, and you may initialize it to another value, but the key point is I want to illustrate that imagine during your program you have a situation where you want to compute a result and you divide one value by another, but you may not be aware, but the, the, the divisor could be zero. So if I said result is equal to x divided by y, what I'm actually doing is I'm dividing 13 by zero. Now as you know, mathematically, you cannot do that. The result would be infinity. So what happens if I try to compile that program? Well, let's have a look. Now notice it compiles successfully. So that's what I want to point out. This is a logical error, not a syntax error. So the compiler will only catch syntax errors. It will not find logical errors. That's up to you, the human being, to find. So if I try to print out results, let's see what happens. System.out.println result, excuse me, result is results. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's compile this first. Ah, oh, I forgot to put the quotes there. My bad. Let me try that again. Yeah, of course, it compiles successfully. And now let's run it. Notice we get a Java runtime error. It says exception in thread main, and it says java.lang.arithmetic exception, division by zero. So it actually tells you the error message is quite informative. And it tells us that the error occurs in this file which is the name of my file here, arithmetic operator demo, dot main, inside the main method on line 7. So this is where the problem occurs. So the error messages can be quite informative, as you can see here. So I'm curious, what would happen if both x and y were 0? Will that compile, or will it compile successfully and run? Let's see. And as you can see, it compiles successfully, because once again, these are logical errors. Let's see what the actual error message is when we actually try to run a program such as that. Again, it's division by zero. So these are just two error traps. Just be careful that when you write your code, it's your responsibility to verify that the operations you wish to perform 
will perform successfully, i.e. that the range of inputs are valid. And in this case, if y was 0, that would not be valid. That would be division by 0, which would cause a runtime error, and your program would simply crash. So that's the key point I want to highlight here. So thank you for watching this video.